And we are live. Hello, everybody. Can you see us well? Can you hear mm -hmm. us well? You can tell us that in the ch chat section at your right. Uh, hi, everyone. Hello, Deepan. Hi, Azim. Hi, Sandrine, May. Hello, Sebastian. So many people. I, I, I like to see that uh, it's running fast on the chat. <laughs> it's going fast in chat, on the chat. So nice. Hello, everybody. We are very happy to have you. Thank you for joining us tonight in live for API workshop. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself. I am Lamia, event and community manager at Le Wagon Paris. And around me, there is a, the brilliant team that will run the webinar tonight. Um, we are not from the same cities, as you know. Maybe you can tell us that in the chat, uh, in the chat section from which part of the globe you are to to know to know you a little bit more uh, you can add the flag of your country for example um so from which part of the globe we we have lisboa portugal lisbon portugal in the team we are from uh ryan is in sao paulo lucy sarah and anne from london and i am i and i am in paris <laughs> montreal even belgium so nice Madrid, so many, so many countries, so many cities. Nice to see that. It's very, it's very nice to see that. So we know a little bit each other. Uh, we know each other, sorry, a little bit more. It's great. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm going to present before starting this workshop Le Wagon for the people who don't know our school. Le Wagon is a school specialized in technical and intensive training. We started seven years ago in Paris, and we are now present in 39 cities around the world. We have trained more than 7,000 people to do web development and data science. Uh, we have developed two intensive training course. First one in nine weeks in web development for people who don't have technical background with different profile as freelancer, entrepreneur, web designers, and people who want to change their career. So it is a great, great melting pot of background. <laughs> and uh, recently we have launched a new intensive uh, training course in nine weeks also. Uh, in data science, uh, it is for people who want to go even further and become data analysts. Uh, now you know a little bit more about Le Wagon. It's time to know the team who are here. And uh, here is a wonderful team, as you can see. <laughs> uh, during this session, uh, they, are going, they are going to be with you uh, all, during all the session. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Maybe, Ryan, you can begin because you are going to be the lead teacher tonight. Yes, sure. Thank you, Lamia. Hello, everyone. Very good to see so many people from so many countries. Uh, a little bit about myself. My name is Ryan Castro. You can call me Ryan or Ryan. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I studied mechanical engineering, but I never wanted to work in the industry. So I took the Le Wagon Bootcamp to learn about web programming, programming, and start a career in it. And I did it in Sao Paulo about two years ago. So in the bootcamp, I met my business partner today. We founded a software house. So we build products, we build APIs, we help startups to maintain their product, to launch new features. And also I am a teacher at Levagun. So I travel around. I have already taught in Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Sao Paulo, of course. And I love doing it. I love teaching and I love building products and delivering value. Thanks, Ryan. And now we are you are going to see you with Lucy. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, so my name is Lucy. And I did the wagon in January, actually, with Sarah and Anne. Um, and before that, I was working in France. Um, and I was working for a publisher, The New York Times, in advertising. And in my last role there, I was working with developers um, almost on a daily basis. And the more I worked with them, the more I got skill envy of things they could do and the products they could build. So I decided to quit and uh, try and get the skills for myself, which is why I joined the wagon. And it was the best decision I've ever made. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm a teaching assistant for the current batch of students and also do um, freelance work as a developer. So welcome, everyone. Over to Sarah. 
Thanks, Lucy. Hi, everyone. So I'm Sarah. Like Lucy said, we did the batch in January. Um, before that, I worked in an ed tech startup. And a bit like Lucy, I just felt that I wanted to have a bit more of an impact. Um, and I was really jealous of, you know, the people building the product. Um, and also prior to that, I'd been a teacher. So lots of different pivots in my career. Um, but now I'm really loving coding, um, learning a new language at the moment, Python um and freelancing and TAing for the wagon so very excited to have you all here Anne you're next hi guys good evening so my name is Anne and uh, before doing the the batch with these two lovely girls uh, so I was working as a consulting and then in, in customer success and a bit of same as uh, Lucy so I was a bit bored and I was really jealous of all the developers so I wanted to try it myself and I absolutely love it and so I'm coding uh, almost well every day yeah. <laughs> and I'm back as uh, well a teacher for the wagon and working as well as a freelance so yeah enjoy the workshop, the workshop tonight thanks thanks and so now you know everyone and before starting few few rules first as you know Ryan will give the lecture as the lead teacher for about an hour and a half and Sarah Anne, and Lucy will answer to your question to ask your question please use the section question at your right uh, during the lecture listen carefully no need to take notes as takeaways because you will be onboarded on learn and learn is the e-learning uh, le wagons platform where you will find the keynote of the workshop the exercises and the correction so you can go further on your practice alone at home after the webinar and last but not least you will have a lifetime access to learn and on learn please give us your feedback uh, it is super useful for us to have your feedback it is very appreciated and as we are doing many webinars it is great to have your return to improve finally at the end of the webinar you will receive a replay link to rewatch to rewatch uh, the workshop uh, right after the end and that is for me so i let the stage to this splendid team have a wonderful work workshop thanks everyone and ryan i let i, I let you the stage <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lemia. OK, so I'm going to share my screen right now. Let me know if you can hear me well and if you can see me well. And OK. So let me make full screen. Perfect. So OK, today we're going to talk about API and a little bit more. And we're also going to prototype and build a CRM using APIs and webhook. So welcome everyone. And we're gonna cover what they are, what are APIs, why and how to use them. So first we're gonna see how APIs created an actual ecosystem. Then we're gonna learn about webhooks and how they can optimize automations, how they can make our life easier actually. And the last part we're gonna prototype a process using APIs that we learn using webhooks and without doing a line of code. So we're gonna actually uh, use both to do something to make our life easier. So first, what's an API? So many of you probably heard API here, API there, but it's very common that we don't know what, what's an API, what they do, what they are for. So let's take, let's use a metaphor. So let's take a restaurant as a metaphor, okay? So when we go to a restaurant, how do we get the food, okay? So first we enter the restaurant and then we have to ask the waiter, okay, please, I want this soda. And let's think about how this process works, okay? So we are in the left side, we are the customers who enter the, the restaurant and we ask the waiter to get the food for us into the kitchen, okay? So this metaphor, we need to order the food through the waiter. So the waiter here would be the interface, okay? And the kitchen, the restaurant's kitchen, would be the application. So what's that? Well, why is this actually useful, okay? So as customers of the restaurant, we don't need to know what's going on in the kitchen. We don't need to know about uh, what, what the ingredients 
that they, they bought, what's the temperature of the oven. So there have many things happening in the kitchen and we don't need to know everything that's going on there. We want to order our food and we want to receive our food in a nice quality. Yes, of course, but we don't need to know what's going on there. So through the waiter and actually the menu, we can order food and we can get our food. So the, this, the API, in this case, it extracts complexity, okay? We don't need to know everything, but we still will we, we receive our food. So how does this work, okay? In order to get our food, to ask the waiter, we need to read a documentation, okay? So every API has a documentation. And in this case, in this metaphor, we have the menu. So we can read the menu, we can say, okay, I can order this, this, and that. And this is how we know how to communicate with the interface with the waiter, okay? So we've talked about application and interface. So the application is the kitchen, the interface is the waiter. And what's the P for programming? Why programming? So API is application programming interface and the APIs are built for programs, okay? So the actual consumers of APIs, they are the developers and the users, the end users, they don't even know about them. That's why there are many very famous APIs out at out there in the markets and the developers know all about them, but the users, they actually, we as end users use APIs every day when we access Airbnb and every and several services, but we don't know the APIs because they are made for the developers to use. The programs will consume the APIs and the users will just receive the, the benefits, okay? So let's look at some vocabulary, okay? So first, an API exposes a service, that's the, the data it exposes, and the developers write programs to consume that service, okay? So let's get into another metaphor so we can grasp this. So imagine the API is just exposing some data and we can receive that data, we can consume that data. So thinking about a wall socket, okay? Another simple metaphor. So what is the service that this wall socket is exposing? The service is electricity. So through the wall socket, I can consume electricity, okay? It has a nice, simple interface. And how can I consume it with any electrical device in my house that I have a plug and I just plug into. It's a very simple documentation. Okay, so talk a little, about, a little bit about web APIs. So not all APIs are web APIs, but today when we say API, we are basically referring to web APIs, okay? Because they are so widely spread and widely used that most of the, the, the APIs that we talk about are web APIs. Let me give you an example of an API that is not a web API. On your notebook, if you're using your notebook right now, your keyboard, your keyboard talks to your hardware through an API. So it, when you type uh, a key, it sends a signal to the API of your notebook so it can communicate even if you're using Mac OS or Linux or Windows it can receive the signal and input the text. So this is an example of an API that's not a web API, but mostly when we talk, we, we talk about web APIs. So there are thousands of APIs out there, okay? And we can search them. We, we have uh, this website, Programmable Web. We can, we can see how many APIs are there. There are links, documentations, and we can navigate through them, okay? And let's talk about, Let's give you, I'm gonna give you some examples of APIs that we use in a daily basis. And let's talk about Geo APIs. So one very famous Geo API are the Google Maps API. So what is Google Maps API? Do you know Google? So what can I use it for? So the Google Maps actually makes me, uh, enables me to use the maps from Google to display it in my, website. If I'm developing a website, I'm, I'm a developer, I can display the maps from Google in my website. So let's think about how is this useful 
and how this can actually change the ecosystem. Imagine Airbnb about eight years ago, I think it started, 10 maybe. So imagine the developers of Airbnb, they're creating this whole platform and where you can put flats and rent flats to people and they can browse flats. And I need to display a map for my end users. So imagine if I had to code this map from scratch, okay? It's a very, very hard task. I would need information from all around the globe, every city, every country. I need information about the streets, about the places the, of the entire globe, and I need to code it, and I need to uh, make it available for my, for my users. So that's a very hard task, and that's why we the APIs can help developers so much, and they can help uh, startups to so much. So as an Airbnb developer, I can use Google data, I can use its service through Google API to actually just display Google map in my website. And I could do it very simply, very easily. So how do how how am I am a, as a developer can do it? Through a documentation. And Google is so famous because it provides useful APIs and very easy to read and to implement documentation. So with a few lines of code, I can display a map in my website and I also can personalize things like how will the markers look? It's a, a red, uh, it's a red square. Uh, do I want to display price tags as in Airbnb as markers? How will my map look? Uh, do I want streets uh, gray or not? And you can customize this using the documentation. It's very simple and in the end, you are abstracting this huge complexity, complexity of building an entire map system to just a few lines of code that you can use Google Maps in your platform, in your application, okay? So first, when, when Google Maps started, it was, it allowed you to make around 10,000 or 50,000 requests per month for free. So a lot of startups could could use uh, APIs, the, the Google Map API for free without having to charge. And after you are big, after you're making several thousand of requests per month, they start charging you per request. So that's their business model. So you, yes, you can also make money with APIs and they have a business model for it. And nowadays, Google started, uh, started collecting money from the start, from the first request. So if you want to use Google Maps API in your application, in your first request, they are already gonna charge you. It's uh, some uh, cents per thousand requests. It's not much, but still uh, they charge from the start. And why is that? So in the beginning, Google Maps wanted to go widespread. They wanted to uh, spread around the world so everyone started using it and to get famous and they didn't need to charge in the first in the beginning now they're famous they have a great api they're charging from from the beginning okay and through that we have some competitors okay for example we have the mapbox api it's the same uh, it has several features that google maps has mapbox uh, also has a map, it uses open street maps and it provides an API for you to display your map and it's free for the first 50,000 requests or something per month, okay? So if you're starting a new business, you can start, uh, you can use Mapbox API for free and it's great, it allows you to custom uh, several things. So also we have some other geo API types not just displaying a map, but for example, we have geocoding service. Uh, do you know what geocoding is? I'm gonna explain you a little bit about geocoding. So when you, let me say, let me think I'm building a, I'm adding a flat to Airbnb, okay? So when I add a flat as a user, I just type my address. So just type my address, my street, my number, and, but somewhere along the way, Airbnb are gonna have to display this flat in the map. So it needs the coordinates for this flat. So how do I turn my address string into latitude and longitude? That's that's called geocoding, okay? So Mapbox also has a geocoding API and we can actually look a little bit into the, the Mapbox API so you can see how is it as a developer, how can I consume an API? 
And first of all, we need to sign up to Mapbox to, to get it. You need an account to use it, okay? And you need to get an access token. So let me show you, let me enter the map box right here. And I already have an account, so I can just go to my dashboard. And here you can see I have an access token. What, what is an access token? So when you're consuming the service, let's say Instagram or whatever service you want, Urban D, you need a user account and a, and a user password, okay? So when we are talking about APIs that are, the programs are consuming it, you don't, you don't use user and password usually, you just use an access token that you can identify it's you. So Mapbox can know you made this request. So we can charge you after you made 50,000 requests, for example. So you always need a token to, to communicate with Mapbox. So right here, we can use documentation and let's see the Mapbox documentation and I'm gonna search for geocode. So here it has, it has some tutorials for geocoding. And if we enter the, the geocoding part of the, the documentation, as a developer, we know how to, we don't need to read everything. We know how just to skip to the useful parts. But if we see back here, it gives me an address that I, that's something like, let me zoom in for you guys. And so here is the search text and the endpoint. So I'm gonna type my, the address I want here and it will give me back my latitude and longitude. So here has an example of a request I can make. Usually you're gonna make this with a program, but we can also use the browser to test, to see how it goes. So let me use the browser right here, and I'm gonna enter this. It's searching for Los Angeles. So let me change this to, oh, I think Los Angeles is fine. So here I just use this URL, and it says not authorize it, no token, because I need my token so Mapbox know it's me requesting, okay? So actually I just copied part of the, the URL to show you how it works. And if I want to use it, actually I need to pass the access token and it already gives this, this to me right here. So let me copy this and paste there. And you can see the format. So here it answers me with a format that is called JSON. It's just a format of text, basically, and it will give me keys and values for the answer of the API. So here it, it answer me type, query, features, attribution, and you can read about what each means in the documentation, but here you can see in features, it answer me uh, four locations. So you know when you type some address and it gives you some possibilities, the first one, it's the most likely one. Here we see it has place type, the text, Los Angeles, the place name, Los Angeles, California, United States. So yes, it was, it was what I was looking for. And if you see here, you have the coordinates, latitude and longitude, okay? So it just turned the address to a coordinate. And if I want to, to use a different address, let's say, This street gives me, is the street here in Sao Paulo, and it found it for me, Rua Morato Coelho, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It gives me also the zip code, that's nice, and the coordinates that I, I can use to display in a map, okay? So, really simple, I can use this in my program and I can turn addresses to coordinates, this is geocoding, okay? So moving on, we've seen some uh, geo APIs that's very useful. Let's see, let's see some other types of APIs. Uh, for example, telephony APIs. We have a, a big, big company that's called Twilio. And it's a company that its entire net worth is just around API. It built, it, it built an API and it makes money from the, the API it built. And what Twilio does is 
to it provides a service to send text messages for you. So if you have a startup, if you have a product that needs to send uh, SMS messages or even WhatsApp messages, but mostly SMS messages, you can use Twilio to send it for you, okay? And if we look the stock on Twilio today, uh, it's really, really, really big. The revenue last year was 650 million just from API requests. So how Twilio makes so much money? First, it's easy to implement. So with uh, just a few lines of code, you can implement it. It's a, it has a really easy documentation and it abstracts a service that is really hard. So let's imagine, let's talk about telephony sending SMS messages. And if you're building this yourself, how do you send a text message? So you have to, the operators who have to send the text message. So you need to make some, uh, an API call to the operator and the operator will send the message to the client. But let's imagine one country. Here, here in Sao Paulo, we have four different operators. So imagine uh, having to integrate with all the APIs from all the operators to send text messages to all the phones. And that's not just it. I, I talked just about Brazil and Sao Paulo. If we imagine worldwide, imagine how many telephone operators you have. So to make a small feature on your website, you would need to build this entire system to, to properly send messages to the entire world. Uh, and this, this, would, this is, has a really, really hard complexity and you don't need to do it because Twilio already did it and you can easily send text messages to phones from all over the globe with simple lines of code. So, so that's how they make money. They abstract a service that's really hard and they make it really easy for developers to implement so you can build a product very simply, okay? So some other API examples. Let's see, we have YouTube, okay? So what's the service YouTube exposes? Videos, so you can integrate the YouTube player, the video player in any website. And it's really simple, you just copy and paste some code and you have a video player, you don't have to build it from scratch. And how does YouTube make money? It does not charge you per use but it displays ads in the end of the video. So you can use it for free, but they are gonna sell ads to your end users, okay? And another API is Stripe. Stripe is a payment API. It abstracts the payment service. It's a service very hard to do, for example, and it makes it really easy. It has a nice documentation. And for payment, actually you can't do it easily Depending on your country, you can't do it yourself. You need, it has regulations, it's not simple. And Stripe already did it and it's safe and it's secure. It, it stores the, the, the user's info properly and you can use it through its API and you're good to go, okay? So to sum up, APIs help you inspire new ideas. It changes the entrepreneurial landscape and it creates ecosystem. So if we didn't have APIs to build an Airbnb, I would need to build the entire map system. I would need to build the entire payment system. I would need to build the entire SMS system to send messages. It would be really hard. It would take years. With APIs, we can use the service. We can consume it and we can build products. We can have ideas to connect things and to build products uh, that do not require that much to build. Okay, we can prototype. So APIs are, a great deal from today world and they help create these ecosystems and they make possible for the startups to exist okay so we've done about apis now we know what apis are and let's talk a little bit about webhooks okay so we've seen how APIs are helpful, and now we're gonna learn what webhooks are and how can they how can it help us, okay? So webhooks are basically the opposite of an API, okay? So let's imagine we are expecting guests for dinner at home, okay? So we are in the kitchen, we are preparing dinner, and we are expecting expecting a guest. 
So we don't want to every time we go to the door, check if the guest arrived, go back. Go to the door, check if the guest arrived, oh no, go back. We don't want that. We don't want to be going to the door at all times. So how, how do we know the guest has arrived? Through a doorbell. Yeah, yeah, it's very simple, but some some sometime we didn't have that. We had to check the door every time. So through a doorbell, the guest arrives, it rings the bell, and oh, okay, now you know the guest arrived. You didn't need to check it every time. So this is what we call the Hollywood principle. It's don't call us, we will call you. And this is what a webhook is about, okay? So a webhook is based on an event. So when the guest arrives, something happens, okay? So we don't need to be checking every time. We just base it on an event, and when this happens, a webhook is sent, okay? So let's see an, an example. Uh, if we want to sync leads from, let's say, MailChimp with our in-house CRM, so my company has a CRM, and I want to sync my leads, every lead that arrives at MailChimp to my in-house built CRM. So I would, in MailChimp, the, the leads would fill subscription form with the, the email and everything. And what I want to do is set up MailChimp to send a webhook to my CRM, to my company CRM, every time the, the, the lead fills the, the subscription form, okay? So if we look here, what's the event? Every time we have a new email field, the MailChimp will send this webhook, and what will our in-house CRM do when it receives the webhook? It's going to store the email in the database. Okay. So let's let's see some services providing webhooks. Okay. So in Shopify, I don't know if you know Shopify. It's a really huge e-commerce platform. It makes it really easy for you to build your e-commerce around it. Okay, and it allows you to set up webhooks for, let's say, when a new, a new uh, purchase is made, it sends you a, a message, it sends the data to your in-house CRM, okay? So you can set up several types of webhooks in Shopify based on different events. Another uh, platform that sends webhooks is Stripe. So when you integrate the payment, let's say the payment takes takes some time to, to actually complete. You don't want to be calling the API every time. Oh, let's see if this payment is, uh, has gone through. Let's see now. Let's see again. You don't want to be doing that, to be making several calls to Stripe to just see if one payment was done. What you want is you set up a webhook that Stripe's going to send you every time a purchase is completed. Okay? So... It, it's don't call us, we'll call you. Stripe will send you the webhook every time a payment goes through and your program can properly give access to the user, for example. So this is what webhooks are. It's the Hollywood principle and it's based on events, okay? So let's prototype. Let's see how we can use this for us. And we're gonna build a custom sales CRM, okay? So what's a, what's a CRM, a client relationship manager? So we need somewhat, somewhere to store our leads. So if we receive leads for our business, we want to store them and we want to organize them if they have been contacted already, if they are closed already or not. So this is a CRM, is a place where you organize the, the leads from, for a company so you can know, okay, I need to call this guy or no, this one is already closed, I already called this. And so what do we need to build our own custom CRM? We need to capture the lead information so the lead can fill in a form, for example, and we need to get his email, his name, maybe what he wants from us. And we need to push it to a process tool. So we need to store this information. We could use, for example, a spreadsheet to store this, but we are going to use something more powerful uh, for that. Okay. So to capture the lead data, we're going to use Typeform. Okay. So Typeform is a tool to make for simple forms that you can send the link to your 
to your potential leads and they can uh, fill in whatever you want. And to store the data, we are going to use Trello, OK? So I don't know if you know Trello already or not. It's very famous, too. And it's very simple. It allows you to build lists and to add uh, cards to these lists, OK? So you can easily move one card from one list to the other. So thinking about communicating from Typeform to Trello, what we want to do is when a user fills in the form in Typeform, it's going to send a webhook and Trello is going to receive it, OK? So it would be great if we, Typeform could send directly to Trello webhooks, but we are not Trello developers. So we cannot make this connection uh, true. We cannot make the API from Trello to receive directly from Typeform. So to make Typeform send the information to Trello, we need a, my, uh, a middleware, OK? Usually, this middleware is a simple program that's going to get the webhook from Typeform, and it's going to send an API call to Trello. You can build this as a developer, but we don't need to do this right now because we are going to use Zapier. Zapier is a service that allows you to connect several, several different times, thousands of different platforms to do just that. You receive webhooks from one and send API requests to another. So Zapier can make the middle ground between Typeform and Trello, OK? And we don't need to code it. So let's get this down to practice. Ah, just going to tell you, Typeform already has an integration with Trello, but it's not as powerful as if we use Zapier. It has less options than if you use Zapier in the middle ground, OK? But if you want, you can use Typeform's direct integrations with Trello later, OK? But for this exercise, we are going to use Zapier. And first of all, for this demo, I'm going to sign up to Typeform to make a form. Then I'm going to build a new collection on the form. I'm going to show you how to do this. And I'm going to sign up to Trello, create a new leads board. And finally, I'm going to set up Zapier to connect between both. So what do we want here? Let me si sign up to Trello first. I'm going to use a temporary mail. OK, so there is a, a, a service that's called Get Nada. Get Nada, I don't know. And you can say, OK. Uh, hi, I'm Castro, and it creates you a temporary mailbox so I don't get spammed later, OK? So I'm going to use this new temporary email. Let me copy this to sign up for Typeform. So I'm going to skip the onboarding process, if allows me to. Course, OK? And here, it sends me a confirmation email, and I can just check the mail box and activate my account. It's very simple. And now I have a Typeform account, OK? Uh, does not allow me to skip the setup. Let's do it simple. My name is Hayan Castro. I'm going to use for personal and generate leads. That's it. Skip. OK, so I'm going to start a new Typeform from scratch. I'm just showing you the entire process, OK? So you can do it later uh, when you have access to, to the Learn platform. I'm going to call this Typeform my leads form. And here we can add a question. So I'm going to add my first question. It's going to be a short text. And I can say, what's your name, OK? Let's add it. Another question, and uh, it will be, what's your email? So we can get the email for, from our lead. And let's add a third question. Could be a long text. And how can we help you? Okay, We don't want many different questions, because we want a simple form to get the email from our leads. If we make a big form, 
we might lose some leads in the process and we don't want that, okay? So we just created this form. Now we need to publish it. And here we can share the form. It gives you, it gives us a nice link that we can share in our social media and the leads can enter this and they're gonna see a form like this. So what's your name? Let's see, Bruce Wayne. And my email is bruce.wayne dot com uh, how can we help you I want to sell products my products it's our lead okay so Bruce Wayne just submit submitted uh, the form and if we look back here in type form we have a tab that's called results okay so with the results tab we can see all the responses and all the submissions. So we have, let me refresh this. We have one response in total. It says Bruce Wayne, it has the email and it has the how can we help you, okay? That's great. We got the first part. We can receive new inputs from new leads. So now let's take a look at Trello where we will store these leads, okay? So I'm gonna create a new account. I'm gonna use the same email from GetNada. It's the temporary email. So I need a password, name, password, and traffic lights. That's great. So now we have signed up properly on Trello and we have our account, we need to create a new board. It's the board that where we create the lists and we, we can create the cards, okay? So let's call this board the leads, other, actually let me, I don't want business class, start with all business class, get started. Okay, now it's stopped pushing me. Let, let us create a new board. Here, create a new board. So it's going to be the leads board, leads. Beautiful. And here we can create the lists. So we want an inbox for when the, the new leads arrive. We put them in the inbox. We want a contacted form. So after we contacted them, and maybe we can do a close deals. So, so if we think about the, the, the flow here, whenever a new lead comes here in the type form, I create a new card here in the inbox. So if we do it manually, it's very tiresome. Let's say, let's create a new card. So the card is gonna be called Bruce Wayne. And in the card description, I can do something like this. Bruce Wayne's email and whatever you wrote here, I want to buy new products. So here I make I made the Bruce Wayne cards and every new type form, I can just read it from here and copy paste to here. But imagine you have 1000 leads, your business starts growing. That's not very good. You know, you have to by hand copy paste from one tool to another. That's not good. What we want here is to automate. Whenever a new lead in, comes in to type form, it automatically fills in our inbox cards from Trello, okay? So that's great. Let's move on. So to do this, to connect both platforms, both Typeform and Leads platform, we're going to need to use Zapier as a middleware. So whenever Typeform sends the webhook, Zapier is going gonna, is gonna to fill in the, the, the Leads form. It's going to send an API request to Trello. So let's sign up to Zapier with this new email. Signing up. I'm not a robot. Also traffic lights. This is a Google API, guys. The, the reCAPTCHA, Google built it. So Zapier is using uh, this CAPTCHA uh, from Google. It's an API from Google. 
that easily, easily allows Zapier to identify robots. So, okay, now I've proven I'm not a robot and let's skip. Great, I have a Zapier account and to connect my type form and leads, I need to make a new Zap, okay? That's gonna connect both. Uh, a little spoiler ahead, I, I did try this uh, a while ago before, but it was not working because maybe probably because of temporary emails, uh, but let's gonna hope, cross fingers, it's gonna work. But if not, don't worry, it's probably because of the temporary emails and you can uh, get it to work properly when you're doing on the learn platform, okay? So don't worry, let's go through the process. So I'm creating a new app and as we said, let's name it. Uh, leads to Trello, okay? And I'm gonna set up an event and I'm gonna set up whatever happens after. So first we choose an app. So I'm gonna choose type form. And the trigger event is a new entry. So whenever I have a new entry on the type form and let's continue, it asks me to sign into type form. So I need to log in to my type form account. So I'm signing in right here, accept. So I'm allowing Zapier to get stuff from my Typeform account. So great, I've signed in, let's continue. And it asks me to choose which form I have. So remember I created the leads form into Typeform. So here it displays a list of the forms I have into Typeform. This is actually an API call that Zapier is making to Typeform to get all the forms available, okay? So now here I have leads form and let's continue. And test trigger. So let's test if it's working. Great, it found, an it found the entry and here, see, remember Bruce Wayne, the entry that we, we had in type form, it found it. So it's all good and let's continue. So now after the event, do this. So what, we, what do we want it to do? So now we search for Trello. As you can see, it has, it has thousands of apps. You can integrate with Twitter, Google Sheets, Stripe, several different things. It's amazing. It's very simple to use. And so let's integrate with Trello and let's choose an action. So we have several different types of actions you can do with Trello. That's, that's why I said using Zapier, you have more, it's more powerful than using direct type form to Trello. And here we could create lists, we could create boards, we could create comments. And let's just create a card that's what we want. We want a new card to pop in here in the inbox, okay? So we want to create a card, let's continue. Asks me to sign into Trello. So I need to authorize my Trello, my Zapier account, let's allow it. Great, continue. And here it says customize card, let me choose the board. So which, which board is the card gonna be created? I have my board here, it's called leads. Let's select leads. And it's gonna ask which list do you want to create it in? So let's see here, it found the three leads, the three lists from my Trello board. And it asks me in which list do you want? So I'm gonna say inbox. And now it asks me the name of the card and the description of the card. So when you click here, you can select several different options. So for example, for the name of the card, you can see, uh, let me zoom in for you guys. You can select several things. For example, the submit date, the form responses. Here you have the first question of the form. That's really uh, the, what's your email? And we have the other, what's your name? So let's say we want the name for the title. That's great. And for the description, we want the email. We want some ashes and we want the answer. How can we help you? Okay. So it's a really nice integration with Typeform. It's getting things for us. We have several different options. We have label, custom label, card positioning, uh, attachments, whatever we want, but we're gonna make it simple and we can continue. So here, after, so after a new entry comes into Typeform, it's gonna send data to Trello. 
and we can do test and continue. And it's done, okay? So here we can turn our Zap on. So now it's online, okay? And now when we go into the, the type form, let's get this. get this link and when we fill this link here when we fill in the information it should go to Trello okay so let's go let's try it out my name my email and want to know more more about your company so I just submitted a new entry, and if it worked, it would create a new card. As we can see, it didn't create a new card. As I said, probably because of the temporary email thingy. So it should create a new card here. So we can look to Zapier, and let's check it out if it went through. So here we have the, the task history, and we can see it, di it did complete as success, success, okay? So we can see it found the new entry in type form. It sent the data. So here is what I, I filled. Ryan, the email, and how can we help you? And it did send to Trello. So here is the data out. So it sent it to Trello. And so it's something with the, tra the Trello API and the temporary email, something like this, that it didn't go through properly. But don't worry, uh, you can build it, use the regular emails, and it will go through, okay? I've, I've, I've did this before and it worked fine. So this, so now you just created a zap that every time someone fills in the type form, it's gonna send and fill the leads for you in Trello. You can check the histories, you can check if, if it has errors and you just created an automation that will, will get thousands of emails and automatically fuse you, fuse in for Trello so you can use your CRM, okay? So now it's your turn, guys. So it was great. We talked about APIs, we talked about web hooks, and we talked about how to prototype to actually use both for our benefit. And you all are gonna you are gonna receive an access some somewhere here. It's gonna pop up at, uh, right at the end of the of the live. It's gonna pop up an access to the learn platform, and you can you have some takeaways. So, so I just put the, the link on the chat and in a few seconds we will have the pop-up right in front of you. So start. Okay, so, so a little bit about the, the Learn platform that you're gonna have access to. So here you have access to the slides, you have access to a video uh, and also some instructions for you. And you also have some Takeaways, you have the your turn, so you can get started, you can build, you can actually uh, customize, do this exercise. You have some, some key points to go through. And you also have great takeaways, I really recommend them. So uh, they summarize everything we talked about and I recommend you to read the takeaways, they're great. And also down here, you have a feedback form so you can fill in if you like what you did like most, what you liked least, and it's also great. Yes, it is very useful for us to uh, to improve our webinar. So don't hesitate to to give us your feedback. Thank you, everyone, for be, for having been here tonight with us. Uh, we are very happy to we had we have very happy to have you to have you. Sorry. Uh, now you, have, you will have all the material on Learn or e-learning platform. You will find the keynote of the workshops, the exercises as uh, Ryan show you, showed you, and their correction, so you can go further on your practice. And as I said at the beginning of this webinar, you will have a lifetime access to Learn. So don't hesitate to go back uh, and uh, 
do your exercises and learn. Um, finally, in a few minutes at the end of the webinar, you will receive a replay link to watch it. Um, and uh, we have many different webinars with many topics. Don't hesitate to join us for our next ones. You can find them on our website. And thanks to this brilliant team, as usual. <laughs> you are perfect. Thank you for your help tonight. Thank you, uh, everyone. Have a good evening and see you soon. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good evening.